JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 17th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar slid against all the other major currencies on Thursday during the Asian morning Friday, losing the most, versu losing the most ground versus CHF, GBP, Euro, and the Yen. At first, glance, at, fe excuse me, at first uh, glance, the weakening of the US dollar and the strengthening of the British pound suggest a risk on uh, trading, while the strengthening of the franc and the Yen point, uh, point otherwise. However, taking a, clo taking a closer look, we see that the main gainers were the currencies, the respective central banks of which announced uh, their uh, monetary policy decision ye decisions yesterday and today in Asia. First of all, we had the SNB, the Swiss uh, National Bank, which uh, proceeded with no changes in its uh, policy settings, neither in the accompanying statement. Officials reiterated for the upteenth time that the Swiss franc remains highly valued and that they, they remain willing to intervene in the FX market as uh, necessary. In the past, those, states, those statements uh, were expected and thus the market reaction was uh, minimal. However, this time around, with Euro franc falling notably due to the uncertainty the new COVID-related restrictive measures posed to the, uh, to the European economies, some participants may have been expecting Swiss officials to strengthen their wording with regards to preventing the franc from uh, strengthening more. Thus, the outcome came as a disappointment to them, and that's why the franc kept strengthening, ending the day as the main gainer among uh, the majors. Then it was the Bank of England's turn, with British uh, officials surprising the markets for the second time in six weeks. At the November gathering, market participants were assigning an 80% uh, chance for a rate increase and instead, and instead uh, policymakers refrained uh, from acting. Now, the financial community was confident that due to the increasing COVID cases and the new restrictive measures in the UK, the bank may prefer to wait for a couple of... Uh, more months before uh, before acting. Again, the bank surprised investors and decided to push the hike button, lifting interest rates to 0.25% from 0.10%. The policy committee voted 8 to 1 for uh, raising rates, with the only dissenter being Silvana Denreiro. In our view, this suggests that the committee as a whole is more concerned over high inflation rather than uh, over a uh, potential uh, um, economic uh, slowdown. After all, the bank uh, pointed to the likelihood of more modest uh, tightening with Governor Bailey adding that it is unclear whether Omicron would ease or add to inflationary pressures. According to media, investors are now pricing in three more quarter point uh, increases until September 2022, which suggests that the pound could stay supported for a while more, even against the US dollar. Remember that the Fed had has yet to deliver its first rate increase while it sees three hikes until the end of uh, next year. So, at the moment, market pricing uh, with regards to the Bank of England uh, is more aggressive. However, aggressive ex expectations leave ample room for disappointment as well. Thus, if the Bank of England appears a bit more concerned over COVID at one of its upcoming uh, meetings, the pound could come under strong selling interest. 
Now, soon after the Bank of England, we had the ECB announcement. This bank decided to keep all three of its interest rates unchanged, as was widely anticipated, and announced that it will end uh, the pandemic emergency purchase program in March. However, due to the renewed uncertainty triggered by the fresh COVID-related lockdowns uh, across uh, the block, they decided to extend their, their investment horizon but also to compensate by doubling the monthly pace of the asset purchase program for the second quarter. Given that there was a battle between the doves and the hawks within the council, it seems that this may have been the common uh, ground. The doves were concerned with regards to the broader economic outlook and the implications of uh, COVID, while the hawks were concerned over extremely high inflation. The reaction in the euro was to the upside, perhaps as some market participants have been expecting the bank to extend its uh, PEP uh, program in the midst of uncertainty and the, actual, and the actual decision came as a disappointment to them or perhaps uh, to increase uh, the pace of, uh, of APP purchases uh, by more than they did. However, in our view, the outcome still suggests uh, that at least for now, the ECB remains accommodative. Although officials are expected to slow down their APP in, in the third quarter and bring it back to the current pace in uh, the fourth quarter, they maintain, flexibility, excuse me, they maintain flexibility to adjust all their instruments as, as appropriate. So if the economic outlook darkens further due to the new restrictions, we cannot rule out maintaining the double pace of APP purchases for longer or even resume um, uh, the PEP. Thus, even if uh, the euro continues to strengthen uh, for a while more, we see its upside being limited, especially against, uh, uh, against uh, the British uh, pound and the US dollar, the central banks of which are expected to keep tightening their uh, restrictive uh, policies much faster than the ECB. Finally, today during the Asian session, we got the Bank of Japan decision. This bank kept its main policy tools unchanged, namely it maintained the short-term interest rate target at the minus 0.1% and the 10-year uh, Japanese government bond yield target around 0%. However, it, it has tapered its uh, corporate uh, bond and commercial paper buying, which is a scaling back move of its pandemic relief measures. This combined with the fact that other major central banks appear more concerned over inflation than, than another potential um, economic slowdown allowed the yen to march higher as well. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at uh, 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I need to let you know that uh, most probably next week there will be no uh, weekly Market Outlook webinar, neither uh, daily market review videos. Uh, so... Um, we, uh, I will return on with uh, the videos on, I will probably return on with the videos on uh, December 27th. So have a great day, uh, greater uh, next week and uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. See you on December 27th. JFT, just fair and direct.